In this module, we're going to go through the first step becoming a strength coach. Just start. That's it, right? Just start. You really need to get experience because that's the only way you're going to be good. We talked about in the first chapter of the book that the chances of us getting replaced by artificial intelligence are about 37%. That could change tomorrow. But the point being is your skill set is not really tied into what you know. It's what you can do. Strength coaching in general is a service-based industry. It means we serve others. Being in front of people, being able to directly assist people, being able to support people is a learned skill. It's experience. It's experience. It's experience. But before we can get experience, we need to be competent and capable. So we're going to go through two big things, reading and training. That's it. Right? Before you start to look at what internships to do, what mentors to get, what steps you need to take, you need to build a foundation off of what is actually the most important tenets of being a great strength coach is the willingness to learn and the willingness to try something. That's it. So we're going to go through those two steps. After that, we're going to move into the next module. But stay in on this one because this is going to be the foundational piece that moves us all the way from this first step to the last. And if you are already a strength and conditioning coach, meaning I've been coaching for an extended period of time, I already got that job, great refresher because the truth is you got into this for a reason. Because you love to train, you love to learn. Don't lose that. All right, let's hit this module. The first thing we got to go through before we go into just start is try to evaluate what is it exactly that you want in strength conditioning? That's the first thing I ask any single person that works with me is, what do you want? What do you want to accomplish? You know, usually it's, I want to work with elite level athletes. I want to work in the college and the team sector. I want to do the things that I think are going to bring me notoriety, acclaim, maybe financial compensation. And that could be true. But then I'll ask you, why do you want that? And then this really stems from Simon Sinek's seminal book, Start With Why. They don't buy what you do, they don't buy how you do it, they buy why you do it. And that's the same thing. I'm trying to buy why you want to be a strength coach. Tell me, because I'm about to dump some time into you. I have a lot of other things going on, so I want to know your why. Because everyone will tell me they want to be an elite level population strength conditioning coach. I want to work with professional athletes. I want to work with these like one percenters. And they tell me, oh, well, I really just want to help people. I felt like I was underserved. In my development, I felt like I didn't have good accessibility to strength conditioning I thought would give me this edge. And when you think about those two and you work with elite level populations and you start to associate what it is what you're doing with what it is why you're doing it, you realize there's a disconnect that those things are not necessarily one and the same. And when you start to do the job and you're faced with this, now it's a routine and we'll talk about this in day one and the actual transition, when you're done with the climb and you've reached this milestone of getting this elite level population based job of working in a team setting or working with elite level athletes, you feel a little bit empty or disenfranchised and maybe you feel underappreciated and you start to evaluate why that actually is. It really comes down to you never really had that hard conversation of why you want to do it. And if you want to help people, the elephant in the room, and this is the God honest truth, is you're going to be much better served helping people that need help than people who don't. So if I was going to break down elite level populations versus high school, middle school, maybe even Division three, Division two, FCS, JUCO, NIA, NIAA, all these kind of places, well then, if I start to evaluate my role and what I want to do with why I'm doing it, you need to sync up those two. Let's say your why is, I want to be a strength conditioning coach, but I don't want to leave the, the area where I'm from. Family's really important to me. My family, I want to have accessibility to. I want to be there for my wife and kids. I want to have my kids close to their grandparents. Maybe it's I want to work at a specific school or organization. Maybe it's, I want to work at a specific level, high school, college, pro. I want to work with specific people between gen pop, 
middle school, high school, college, professional. I want to do this specific thing. Well, it has to come back again to what's the, the harmony with what and why you're doing it. And I'll tell you this, this is where I drop the ball. I got blinders on when I'm doing all these internships to why I was doing it in the first place. And it probably, served, I can tell you definitively, it stemmed from a place of I desired and coveted that for myself. I always wanted that. I was envious of the people that had good resources in strength conditioning. I always wanted to be able to do that. And I kind of fell into this role of following this perpetuated cycle of intern, intern, intern. I remember when I was done with my fourth internship and I was starting a graduate assistant, I was telling my father that I will have to do another internship. And he said, at a certain point, when do you start to evaluate this isn't going to be your calling? What happens if you don't get a job at the end, end of this next internship? And my response was knee-jerk. I'll just do another internship. I got lucky in a lot of ways, right? I talked about this in the intro. I was able to live 15 minutes away from where I went to grad school, one of the best grad schools, grad programs in the country. I was able to live at home until I was 26 with a very supportive family. I got really lucky in a lot of different situations. I can tell you when I was interning at Harvard, I was able to sleep on a futon in my, one of my buddies from college kitchen. Charged me 200 bucks a month. One month I actually got off. At Georgia Tech, I lived in this kind of halfway home. I was paying 250 bucks a month. At Old Miss, I was able to get a kind of temporary housing thing from students that weren't using it in the summer. So I was subleasing it. I was paying another 250 bucks a month. But the point being is, I had to scratch, kick, and crawl and find creative ways to not spend a lot of money and save money and earn money. I was doing all sorts of stuff on the side and I was trying to figure out how to make it work without taking out loans, but you end up taking out loans anyway. But the thought is I could pay that back when I got that first job. But here's where I'm, here's where I'm going with this and here's where I want you to get just the thought process. And if you're in a strength conditioning coach already and you're listening to this and reading through this, let this serve as a reminder of why you got back, why, why you got into this in the first place. It probably stems from you just like to work out and you like to read. You love to learn. You love to train. You love the development mindset, right? The Carol Dweck growth mindset that you look at challenges as opportunities, that you look at anything in front of you is completely up to you on how you shape and form. I want, to buy, I want a certain body type. I want to perform a certain way. I want to understand something. You go out there and you do the work. And that is the essence of strength conditioning coaches. That's the thing that made us so invaluable over the last 25 to 50 years when we were nothing. And I mean nothing, not even 25 years ago. But we had one guy on staff several programs if we had anything at a college level and you'd be shocked at how many programs actually had nothing to do with it now I look at it we have multiple multiple people on staff at every single possible level it's a huge transformation it comes down to strength coaches are really savvy they're really intuitive they're really ingenuitive they have an incredible mindset towards growth that any problem they see in front of them they will find a solution to that and that is the essence of what a great strength coach is. When we break down anything that's going to happen in your career, there's going to be two certainties. You can always work out and you can always read. And read is kind of more of this, this metaphor for continuing education. And train is this thing of beta testing and, and stress testing ideas. This ebb and flow between research and practical. This constant search for a better way to do something. And here's where I'll get into this, because eventually you're going to hit some sort of milestone and eventually you're going to hit some sort of proverbial fork in the road. You might get fired. You might not get the job you wanted. You might not get the resource you want. Your boss might be very demanding. You might be all the way across country and missing holidays and birthdays and weddings and funerals. You might be missing a lot of things. And if you never really evaluated why you want to do it, I want to serve others. I want to help people. I want to work with elite level populations. I want to make a lot of money. Then you're not going to be able to tolerate that. You're not going to be able to tolerate the lack of 
lack of autonomy. You're not going to be able to tolerate the lack of support or appreciation. You're just going to grow frustrated and angry and disenfranchised. And then as you start to process everything, one things that you'll, two things that you'll always have is you can always go back to working out and reading. But right now you're in the step of, I want to see if I want to be a strength coach. And I'll tell you this, the further you go in your career, the harder those two things are to do. You just have more demands on your plate. But if you can still etch out 15 to 20 minutes to read a research article or a book or go through a course, if you can etch out 30 to 45, even 60 minutes of a workout in between doing five, six groups a day and working six, seven days a week and traveling and doing all these things, you know that you found your calling, right? That if you find what you're destined to do, you never have to work a day in your life. Well, the truth is, when you get to that thing that you find that you really want to do, the thing that gives you purpose and meaning, and hopefully it is strength and conditioning, that if you are going to test that, and you're not just this positive affirmation archetype that constantly forces this narrative in your mind because you have convinced yourself if you say anything negative that you are a failure or a loser. No one wants to hear anyone whine and complain about wearing t-shirt and shorts every day. Well, if you know how to really test that, meaning that you just, all right, I'm going to read another research article about strength conditioning and I'm going to go get a workout in, then you know you found your true purpose and you found your true meaning. It's going to be the bedrock throughout your career, but right now you're going to beta test whether you really want to do this. So if you're an undergrad or if you're in high school or if you're just in general are going through this process of, I kind of want to dabble with the strength conditioning idea. And I don't really know what vector I want to go in just yet. I don't know if I want to work in the team setting or the private sector. I don't know what level I want to work with. I don't know what demographic I want to work with. It's all good. It's all good. Don't worry about that. But what you need to figure out is, do you have the bandwidth and willingness, willingness to work out and read at a high level when everything's on top of you. Because if you're not willing to do it now, at this stage of your career, you're definitely not going to add that in later. You're not going to build in that foundation, that callus of hard work constantly and then still doing stuff for self-development. And I'll go through why that matters here as we go through these modules and bring in value, building leverage, all these other things that I think are foundational. But truth is, is I can tell you who's going to be good and bad during a volunteer experience by those two variables right there. Do they really like to learn? Are they insatiable in terms of their quest of knowledge? And do they love to train? And we'll go through this now transition here as we talk about our next module. But that needs to go from self-serving to self-exploration and trying to understand this at a higher level. But as we break down this process of being a strength conditioning coach, you're going to face a really big elephant in the room of you need experience, but if you don't have experience, you can't get experience. What you can do, though, is you can work out and read. You can show a, a, a interest in this, and you can learn what you do or don't want to do and what your willingness is to do that. These are going to be really important steps as you work through this whole process of trying to be a strength coach. But this is the first step. If you're going to take anything from these modules, and I don't care if you're whatever level you're at, what you need to look at is, most importantly, do you still work out and do you still read? And if you're not, why the hell are you doing this? Why the hell are you starting this? You're going to make $30,000 a year working 60 hours a week, and you don't even like to take advantage of the two amenities that you actually have at all times? If I'm making seven figures to I'm making five figures, I will always still have the opportunity to work out and read. If I am on the verge of getting fired or if I'm on the verge of getting the dream job that I always wanted, I still will have those two things. If I'm on the verge of having to move all the way across country or if I'm on the verge of making a complete transition to the private sector from the team sector, I still have the opportunity to read. When the world is collapsing around you, you can be within this phone book, phone booth of just being able to work out and read. You can put the world in a isolated box and say, I'm not focusing on that right now. I'm focusing on developing me to be the best version of myself I can be. And what that does is give you control. What that does, it gives you leverage. What that does, it gives you a negotiation aspect that no one else will have. And the ones that don't do that 
the ones who always wonder, like, they're the victim. Now the world doesn't happen the way I want it. They'll never grasp that. They'll never truly understand that. The people that I associate with in strength and conditioning are the ones that are insatiable in knowledge and love to work out. And those are the people I want working for me. Those are the people I want to work for. The people that give it up and say it's not all about that. The knowledge on ice gets beat by passion on fire, folks, or the other end of I don't got time to work out. Nonsense. You have time. You're just not making it. And that's the difference between discipline. And discipline's freedom. And making a priority. You know, I talk about with my clients all the time. Your most important meeting you have every single day is getting eight hours of sleep. Your second most important meeting is that workout time that you have scheduled. And you can control that. I have clients with three, four kids. I have clients running Fortune 500 companies. I have athletes that have more, more on their plate from building their brand to managing their businesses to being a professional athlete. And still find time to put their put themselves in that process, getting eight hours of sleep and training, at least somewhat every day or every other day. And that's the thing for a strength coach. You're walking around a weight room, a t-shirt and shorts, and you're not finding time to work out. You have an office and you have a school that might be able to pay for a lot of these resources. And a lot of it's out there for a very, very reasonable price, i.e. this course. It's free. Free for a reason. I want to get this instilled in people's head that what you need to do is completely up to you but why you're doing it that's where you got to come to the face and face the real truth of what makes someone successful or not and you can tell that by someone's willingness to read and actually train all right Stop in here. We'll get to our next module. Let's make sure that we're at least taking an inventory at the end of these modules and asking ourselves, am I making a daily commitment to my personal growth, regardless of my stage? And am I asking myself why I'm doing that? So those are going to be the two big things you want to take home from this. Why you're doing this, and then honestly, are you working out and reading at least somewhat every single day? All right, let's go ahead and hit the next, let's hit the next and we'll go to the next module.